goes with Yarnspirations. Did you ever wonder who creates the amazing Yarnspirations patterns? Well, today I'm interviewing Julia Medill, and she's a Yarnspirations pattern designer. Hi, Julia. It's so great to meet you. I knit. Do you knit or crochet? Do I knit or crochet? I do both. I do wow. all kinds of yarn crafts. So, yeah, if you can make it with yarn, I've tried it. But for uh, my job at Yarn Inspirations, I have to write um, both knit and crochet patterns. So I'm uh, by craft tool. I can. <laughs> wow, you're both very talented at knit, crochet, <laughs> and pattern designing. What was your introduction to yarn? You know, I don't think I ever really had an introduction. It's It was just always around because my mom uh, was a really big crafter and artist. And ever since I can remember, she was always making things. She'd always have her chair with all her things and threads coming off. And um, she had this amazing supply cupboard that I used to mess around with a lot when I was uh, when I was little. I'm sure she did not like that very much. So yeah, I just, I don't remember life without yarn. <laughs> and that I always like that. like a common theme of passing along the art of yarn crafts through generations. My yeah. grandmother crochets, but I knit. So I always saw her using her crochet hook to make tons of granny squares. Yeah, <laughs> a granny, a real granny that made granny squares. My granny made granny yeah. squares too. Me and the other designers um, joke about granny's grab bag when something looks like just like a big mash of colors put together. And my granny really did make granny's grab bag granny afghans because she would make a giant granny square and she'd just like pull the next yarn and it would be like uh, Christmas colors mixed with baby pink, mixed with fluorescent yellow, and they were crazy. But, you know, we loved them. and. They were warm and cozy and granny made them so you know <laughs> well my grandmother she makes hundreds of the granny squares but she never makes them into blankets or oh. afghans so she just has hundreds of them just sitting around and she always says that she's going to end up making them into a blanket but so far there has not been a blanket oh but um, that would be pretty fun to like lay yeah. them all out and play with the different patterns and stuff well she could make a giant blanket yeah 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 Yarnspiration is celebrating Happy You Year in January since December is all about crafting for others. What does this mean to you? Like, I think January, you know, people always make resolutions. So, you know, it's got this fresh start. I think I want to learn some new things, um, some new stitches, some new techniques. Um, I've started dyeing yarn, so I'd kind of like oh, to learn wow. a little bit more about that. So that's my you focus. Well, December, I was knitting either a Pokeball for my brother or um, a hat for my mom. So it's really awesome to just knit um, a dishcloth or something for myself in January. Nice dishcloth for yourself. Wow. Yes. <laughs> um, inspiration can be hard to find. I usually find it from looking at knitting patterns. Where do you find inspiration? Hmm. Well, um, inspiration for what to make and inspiration for what to design, I guess, is a little bit different. So maybe I will see like a mosaic, you know, at, at the subway station or something and think like, hmm, that would make a good afghan <laughs> or a quilt or a rug or something I'll see in a store. So I'm always kind of like logging these things in my head or on my phone is actually a lot more convenient. Um, so I'm always planning and and looking to incorporate these things in my designs so um yeah inspiration is everywhere if you're looking out for it <laughs> i also find it from looking at yarn inspiration mm -hmm. knitting patterns just seeing all the amazing things to create do you ever just get into a creative slump and not know what to create uh, i i have less of a problem with a slump um, and more of a problem with editing my ideas. I think that's my biggest issue is that, you know, maybe I'll have an assignment to make a hat and I'll have like 14 different ideas of how I want to make this hat and I have to choose one and I'm like, can't I just make 14 hats? <laughs> so, so yeah, I need some help with narrowing things down. <laughs> well, that editing process leads us into our next question. What's oh, your course. process for creating patterns? Um, so because I'm I'm designing for a yarn company, the first step is some type of direction from the company. So 
there'll be um, a theme or some certain parameters, like I might have to use a particular yarn. Um, and then after that, it's kind of up to me. That's the really fun part where I get to like pull my ideas and edit my ideas into my plan. So then I might make a sketch or um, a little drawing on the computer, a diagram or something. And <clears throat> then swatching. Um, swatching is super, super important because it tells me what the stitch looks like in the yarn that I'm working with. Um, and it also gives me the gauge, which is the probably the most important thing when you're designing a knit or crochet pattern is figuring out how many stitches per inch. And that all the calculations for the patterns are based on that. So when when people are following knitting patterns and, and don't check their gauge, I mean, us designers are like, no, <laughs> you have to check the gauge if you want it to turn out the same dimensions as it states in the pattern, because that's what all our calculations are based on. So um, once I have my gauge, then it's a lot of math. When um, we're doing garments, like a sweater has to be made in six sizes, and there's a bunch of different parts. So like I need to know, uh, calculate the length of the sleeve and the width of the neck and do that six times over. So it's, it's a lot of math. And lastly, <laughs> what's your favorite yarn and go-to pattern to craft for yourself after crafting for everyone else? I really love your knitted dishcloth pattern and that's my new go-to pattern. Oh, I'm so glad. My favorite yarn, ugh. I think, you know, my favorite yarn and my favorite pattern is always um, what I'm working on at the time. Like, so I think it changes with every project. But what my January U Year project is, is um, this is a Peyton's Alpaca Blend sweater that I'm starting. Wow. And I really want to get this finished before winter is over and I can't uh, wear it anymore. And it's the Witchwood Park Pullover from Your Inspirations, it's free. Um, my fellow designer, a very talented designer, Catherine Poole Fournier, uh, designed this. <clears throat> and this is Peyton's Alpaca and it's brioche stitch. It's a little advanced, but it's not too hard. And this is two color brioche, which is very popular these days. You've probably seen it a lot of It looks really beautiful. And it sounds like a great project too, especially for people who aren't familiar with the brioche stitch because you really can learn it. Yeah, and we've actually got some really nice step-by-step -step photos and some videos on your inspirations to help you out with that. But um, yeah, it's I think it's so squishy, and I love yeah. that you can see the cool thing about this stitch is that you see how the black is dominant here and the white kind of recedes. Yeah. And then on the other side, it's the opposite. The white oh, is wow. dominant. So it makes a really interesting reversible stitch because it looks great yeah. on both sides, but it's um, different. Looks well, good. Well, that but sounds like yeah. a really great project since most stitches aren't reversible and you'll have one side that looks as the wrong side and you can tell it's the wrong side. And so mm -hmm. this one looks awesome since you can't even tell. Yeah. So I, I don't know what it's going to be like when it's completely finished. Maybe I can wear the sweater inside out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, is that your last question for me? Yes, it was. Okay, now it's my turn to ask you a question. I'm gonna ask you, so you were talking about the waffle stitch dishcloth. Yes. You've knit uh, several of them now, right? Yes, they are all inspired by ice cream colors. This one is inspired by strawberry, this one by vanilla, and I'm currently knitting one that's a mint color. And that's my favorite mint chip. Um, so I know the one thing people always ask when you show them something you made is how long did it take you to make it? <laughs> so okay. how long did it take you to make a dishcloth? These dishcloths took me about two and a half hours, including sewing the hanging loop on, except it's different for everyone, but it's a relatively short project, which I really like. And um, the best part of knitting them is the process and the process of doing each stitch and the best part of the process is casting off. Yeah, <laughs> the exciting part, you're done. Yeah, I think um, people tend to forget is that the reason that we make things from, by hand is it's the process. It's not exactly. just the thing you get at the end. I mean, you can buy a dishcloth in the store or buy a sweater, but making one is fun. The knitting part is fun, right? 
And as a selfish question, because I designed this dishcloth, I want to know if um, you learned anything new or you had any stumbling blocks with the pattern. Of course, I learned SL1P, which is slip one pearl wise. And the stitch might sound intimidating, except it's really simple once you learn it. You just insert your needle like a pearl, then you slip it off. And so I learned that, and I'm sure that I'm going to use that in future patterns. And as for challenges, I didn't have a lot of challenges, um, which I think is one of the great things about this pattern, because it's a really great pattern for beginners, and it's relatively quick, and the process is amazing, and it's so much fun. And I never knew um, that you can just cast on um, with two strands of yarn, then cast it off, and then you have a, um, a cord. I thought that you would have to make an eye cord for this hanging loop. So that was a really cool part of the process that I learned. And I'm definitely going to use that when I knit other projects. Yeah, you know, um, I was going to use iCord for this, but because it makes a nice tube. Um, but that um, cast on, cast off cord, I, I learned from uh, my boss, Gail Bunn. Uh, it's so simple. Yeah, you just cast on stitches to the length that you want and you cast off and you've got a cord. That's, but yeah, it's not. Yeah, I never knew that. It's not like a tube, like um, like I cord. It's kind of more of a flat, uh, like a shoelace. Yeah. <laughs> but it still looks nice, and it's yeah. functional and much more simple. And then that's something that um, I try to keep in mind writing patterns is that sometimes you you want to make the make it easier for the person. Um, knitting or crocheting your pattern. Yeah, I think a lot of people get intimidated by an I cord, and they're not sure how to make that. So this is so simple. Yeah, there's always more than one way to to make to get the same result. So my last question is, I want to know what your craft related goals are for your happy you year. Well, for my you year, I want to try and knit more blankets since I usually tend to shy away from those. I currently am knitting the shadow cable knit baby blanket and I am making it longer and it is so beautiful. I love the pattern. Um, and I also want to try and not just rush through it and try to get to that cast off row and really try and realize what you said, that the homemade part of this is the best part and the process is really so amazing. That's awesome. Well, I'm, I'm, it's been so nice talking to you and yeah, I really love you your so enthusiasm. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I hope you keep it up and I can't wait to see your finished blanket. Thank you. And crafters, be sure to check out my new video about how to knit these great dishcloths that Julia Medill designed. And happy you year.